plaintiff, Arterial Smith, says after she started dating the defendant, she discovered he had another girlfriend and was living in a hotel selling drugs. Arterial suing her ex-boyfriend because she claims he damaged her car while taking their daughter to a birthday party. Defendant Kevin Thompson admits he used to live a street life, but he insists he's rehabilitated for the most part. Kevin insists Arterial's car was in bad shape when he drove it, and it was damaged due to the snow. All right, tell me what happened. Glad to be in front of you. I watch you faithfully every day from 9 to on Channel 50 at 9 and 12, at Detroit. 50 in Detroit? Yes, okay. sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, to start off, um, I met the defendant in like 2002, 2003. I was at the gas station pumping gas. He offered to Which pump. Which gas station? Um, the one on 8 Mile and Greenfield, that mobile that sits next to the car wash. I know it's at right yeah. there in my community center. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right at he the offered. Mathis Community Center. We're right there, Greenfield, between 7 and 8. Well, I actually live at Mark Twain, well, come which over is... and volunteer then. I've been there. <laughs> I have been there, not on a volunteer basis, but to check out other information, but I have mm. been there. All right. Okay. Um, you been there? Yes. You haven't been there. No, you haven't. Go ahead. That's the Alvinti Community Center, right? Yeah. <coughs> I've been by there, but I haven't been in it. All right. <laughs> Oh she God. went in. We need you to come in. Every Saturday, we mentor young boys, all right? From 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. I want to see you there. All right. <laughs> At the Mathis Community Center. We're right there, Greenfield, between 7 and 8. Well, I actually live at Mark Twain, we'll come which over is... And volunteer, then. I've been there. <laughs> I have been there, not on a volunteer basis, but to check out other information, but I have hmm. been there. All right. Okay, um... You been there? Yes. You haven't been there. No, you haven't. <laughs> Plaintiff Arterial Smith says after she started dating the defendant, she discovered he had another girlfriend and was living in a hotel selling drugs. So that's where you all met? Yes, at the gas station, Mr. Thompson offered to pump my gas. I told him no. Um, he was really persistent, saying, "Hun, I don't need any money and pulled out like a knot full of money. And I still said no, but he asked for the number and I said, okay. Saw that, my number. You saw that bankroll. <laughs> You have a rubber band around it? Nah, nah. Oh, okay. I had to toss you. I had to pull it out and like, wow, because I wanted what I wanted. Was it Chris? Oh, God. It was, you know, it was a combination of this, that, and the other. Oh, man. You got to be Chris. all in the same direction, everything. <laughs> I, know, I had to get it how it came to me, you know? Go ahead. Serial numbers in order. <laughs> oh, my God. Go ahead. So we proceeded to have conversations on the phone. Um... Mr. Thompson told me that he worked for Ford. He was going to school to be a, or for mortuary science. Um, <laughs> come to find out that wasn't true. It was all a lie, okay? Also found out in the process that he had a girlfriend and was living in a hotel selling narcotics. Well- You know he was selling, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So when I confronted him with this and said, you know what, I don't want any dealers, da da da, da he said, I'll give you all my money. I said, okay. From that point on, I'm sorry, that's how it was, that's how it is. From that point, we dealt with each other for the next four or five years, but throughout that time, Mr. Thompson also was telling me stories concerning his grandmother and how she wanted to meet me. Come to find out, grandma been dead for 15 years. Okay? Oh, let me allow him to give some background okay. first, and then we'll get back to why you're suing him over car damage. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I met Miss Smith 10 years ago. I seen her. She looked good. I had money. I had to talk. I had to put my best foot forward, and look what done happened. You <laughs> said, look what has happened. You're getting sued. That's what I was well, saying. Well, you know, it's a combination right. thing, but since then, you know, we, we, we live together. She put me out. I come back, get together for a minute. You know, I'm not a bad guy. Okay. I've been through turmoils, you know. The problem that she got with me is the problem I got with myself in actuality. Understand. I'm a rather intelligent guy. I have a tendency to stunt my own growth. This woman here, I cannot lie on her. She's the best woman I know in my life. Well, she's not cut from the cloth. From I am street oriented. I have street orientations. She has none. And sometimes I can move a little slick and a little quick and she disagrees with that. I'm, ha I'm slightly rehabilitated. You got me? And I do relapse back to my street life because I, you know, the times are hard times, you know what I mean? But in the event that we got a daughter and um, this is where we stand because she wants to sue me over the car. 
this is what you might want to call a typical beautiful punishment. To a higher degree. <laughs> and that's no joke. That's no joke. I'm telling you. A beautiful punishment. Kind of hard to decipher, isn't it? I like that. <laughs> See, a square and naive young lady did well, not take the bank rolls. She, took that <laughs> she isn't as innocent as you think. <laughs> Tell me about why you saw them over car damages, ma'am. Well, um, in February of this year, uh, my his family called and offered or asked if my daughter can come to her little cousin's birthday party at the Northland Skating Ring. That particular day, I had a hair appointment. So I said, Kevin, can you take Madison to this party? But here's what I want you to do. Take her to the party, which starts at one. Bring her back to me when the party ends at four. After that, you guys have to sit here with me until I'm done getting my hair done. I said this 10 times. Go, come back. It started snowing that day. Mr. Thompson took my daughter to the party. I called to make sure he arrived on time. I called to make sure he left on time. But by the time he got in touch with me, it was six o'clock. I said, well, what's going on? What's the problem? Oh, uh, 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 cause he's an habitual liar. I got stuck in the snow. I said, well, get stuck in the snow. What do you mean? Well, somebody's helping me out and I'm trying to get out. I'm going to call you right back. OK, he finally called me probably half an hour, hour later. I'm not, OK, I'm on, I'm on my way to you right now. I said, OK, bring me my baby. So it's snowing really bad now. I'm not calling back in less than a couple of minutes and say, take my baby home. It took him three hours to get from A to B, which is less than a 10 minute drive. When he came to get me like at three o'clock that morning, I get in my car, I say, well, what's wrong with my car? Something ain't right. Oh, it's all right, it's all right. What was it doing? It, 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 something was wrong with the trans. It was, and you can feel it just wasn't right. You know how when it gets to a certain point, it jumps to, or it kicks in gear, mm -hmm. the first gear, it didn't kick right. I get as far as Greenfield and Linden, my whole car shuts down. I can't move. I say, Kev, what's going on? Plaintiff Arterial Smith says after she started dating the defendant, she discovered he had another girlfriend and was living in a hotel selling drugs. Let me let him tell me today, sir. She bought that car for one thousand dollars from Charity Motors. Are you familiar with Charity Motors, sir? Mother yeah, Wiles. Mother Wiles Charity Motors. You're very okay. Familiar I'm with I help her start it. Sorry. Tell me what happened with the incident, and then we can go to your okay. paperwork. And I did all of drive that. her car, Yana. I uh -huh. drove her. She. First off, let me say this. I never volunteered to do anything. She put me into this here. Mm -hmm. You love me? I wouldn't have drove that car. She is the one that told me I wouldn't even get my hair did. I said, okay, cool. Take my daughter to the skating park. That's cool, too. I did all that. Do you honor, do you remember back in February, snow was this high off the ground? Every every uh, day. Okay. <laughs> Did you really think a car is not going to have complications when it gets stuck? I got stuck and had to call people from left and right, and somebody came out to help me. Finally, I got it out. Okay. I use a four by four Jeep. Ma'am. I'm sorry. Now, the point that I'm making is, 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 you know, she bought a handicapped car from the start because when she bought that car home. How you figure? How you figure my car was handicapped? That car. She bought when she bought that car home, it was clacking and doing all this stuff here. Now, me, I'm wondering, I told you I'm street orientated, right? I know everybody on the sun. I called a partner of mine who knows about cars. I bought the car to him. The car that she has has two drive shafts. He took one of them off and it, it, it made the car work better than what it was. It's a lie. Ma'am, do you have an estimate? What did they tell you? I paid for it. I had to What did pay. they tell you when you They had it? to rebuild my transmission. He burnt out the whole transmission. How did they say that occurred? What did they believe happened? Um, they really, I don't recall them okay. saying how it happened. And, sir? But can yes. I say something, Judge Williams? Yes, yes ma'am. When he brought it back to me and I have no transmission, he, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't buy my transmission out. It's your fault. And Sounds you need like it to me, sir. Sounds like you burn it out. Thousand dollars or not. Right. If I paid two dollars for it, you burned it out. As you said, you were stuck in the snow. Yes, sir. Going back and forth. People frequently burn their transmissions out when they get stuck in the snow. True. And they keep trying to get out. So I believe that's what happened unless you have some evidence to the contrary. And you're talking about her car costing a thousand dollars. How much yours cost? He ain't got one. Thank you. Whoa, 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 Get one, you honor. You ain't got no car. You gonna 
talk about mine, okay, please. Okay, in the process. This is the yes and no. Yes and no. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You <laughs> now, can I finish saying what I'm going to say? I do have a car, Yana, but I did something stupid though. You see what I'm saying? Oh, Again, no. my license is suspended, sir. Okay. And I bought a car, and they I had a Dodge Ram truck, <laughs> but they took it because I owed tickets. So I tried to beat the system. I said, Well, I'm gonna buy me another ride. I'm putting somebody else's name. And what I do that for? Because I opened up a three cans of worms, sir. <laughs> You told me at least three times uh -huh. that you're street oriented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number one, you tried to beat the sisters. I, I tried. just heard you say that and yeah. you failed. Yes. You got a woman. She was your woman. Got a child with her. And she's suing you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what part of the game did I miss? <laughs> um, you know what it is? That's good for the play. No, 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 for the plaintiff, what else do you need me to say? Nothing else, thank you. <laughs> you are a liar and I cannot believe that you did not want to give me my money for my car when you know that you tore it up, but it's all good because I won.